What's up everybody? You may recognize this grumpy little coffee cup from my video editing tutorial where I used him as a video example and it was in theme with my sponsor which was Trade Coffee for that video and I really enjoy their product so I actually have a link to it in the description below if you still want to check that out. Now in that tutorial I asked if you were interested in seeing how I made this little coffee animation and people said yes. So here we are. Now full disclaimer up front, this is not necessarily a beginner friendly tutorial because I don't walk you through every single little step. More or less I show you the entire process and how to make it. If you're an intermediate user, you should be able to follow along. I also have a full tutorial on how to make this coffee face. We'll walk through how to make the coffee material on top of his head and how to make the mug as well. If you want to download this particular facial animation, I'll be giving that away for free in the link in the description below. But with that being said, let's get started. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and add a round cube here, and I'm gonna use kind of the quadrifier settings. This is actually from the extra objects add-on if you don't have that enabled. I'm gonna delete the top half here, then I'm gonna go ahead and grab the bottom here. I'm just gonna scale this out a bit with proportional editing on. And what I'm trying to do right now is kind of create the base of the coffee cup. So I was going for more of a rounded look because I wanted it to be more cartoony. So I'm just gonna kind of go ahead and flat out just a tiny bit of the portion here. Great, so now I kind of have a rounded bottom. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and just add a shade smooth there. And now what I wanna do is kind of extend the stop. So I'm just gonna alt click this, move this edge loop up. Next, I'm gonna to switch to wireframe mode here. Just add a couple edge loops. I just hit Control R and then scaled up on my mouse wheel and clicked. Now I wanna make this kind of solid, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a solidify modifier. And you can set your thickness to whatever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of crank mine up so that it's pretty thick. I like to turn on high quality normals and then I'm gonna come over to the object dab and turn on auto smooth and I'm gonna crank mine up to a value like 60 or 80. Next, I'm gonna add a bevel modifier and that's cause I kinda of wanna get this round chunky design on the edge. Again, you can kinda of play with it to get the size you want. I think I landed mine around 0.3 by the end and I used the angle method and I usually set mine to about 60 or 80 degrees when I'm kinda of doing bevels on objects like this. Next up, I'm just gonna add a subdivision surface modifier, and I'm just gonna put that at the beginning and see how that looks there, and crank it up a few times to kind of smooth things out. So next up, I wanna go ahead and add the handle. And I don't know if you're familiar with the kind of new curve system that's been in Blender, but they've actually made it quite easy. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and create the handle with a curve here. I'm just gonna use a circle curve. So I'm gonna add the circle object here. If you don't have that, you can check and add extra curve under the add-ons. That's free and included by default. It's just not enabled. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this circle. I'm gonna add some depth. You can do that under the bevel menu. I'm gonna start at 0.25 and just scale that down and get that into the place there. I'm not worried about it intersecting inside because we won't see that once we have the coffee liquid in the top. So I'm just gonna kind of rotate around, see, how I want this to look. And I'm happy with that placement there. I think I'm gonna shrink it down a bit and then crank up the depth here so that we can get kind of just a bit of a chunkier look. And with that, I'm pretty kind of happy with that handle and ready to move on. Now next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of adjust some of the settings on my coffee cup. Just tweaking things, I'm gonna shrink the handle down a bit. I'm gonna try and round out the bottom a bit more. I'm using this loop tools tool that will like add a circular effect. And I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this next section because it's just kind of a lot of boring little tweaks. Feel free to tweak yours until you're happy with the look of it. So I wanted to try and do this kind of coffee in a simple way. So here's what I came up with. I went ahead and added a circle mesh here in the top view, and I'm just gonna go ahead and scale that in so it fits inside the inner walls. I'm gonna tab into edit mode here. I'm gonna select everything, and then I'm gonna do a grid fill. This will make sense in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up here to the top. And then what I'm going to do is I've downloaded this image from Pexels and it's free. So I'll go ahead and link that in the description below. But you'll see here that this doesn't fit the proportion because Blender by default measures everything as a square. So I'm gonna show you a little trick. If I open this tab up here, I can see the resolution. And then what I can do is open my calculator here and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of divide that larger number by that smaller number there. So I get 1.5. 
as my ratio. And then I can select that and scale it up by 1.5. And you'll see that it kind of corrects the aspect ratio here so that we can then place that over our copy. And so now we kind of have that set up to be square so that it matches our UV there. And for my UV unwrap, I just projected from view, from the top view there. And then now let's go ahead and add this to our material here. I'm just gonna add kind of a basic image texture here, but I'm actually gonna use this image texture as my roughness and bump. So I'm just gonna select that from before and drop that in there and then turn on material view and go back to UV editor here so that I can go ahead and place this correctly and kind of see what I'm doing in my viewport here. And then just kind of rotate this until I get a position I'm happy with. Now this next portion may take some experimentation, so I may fast forward through parts. I'm gonna explain how to do everything. It's really simple, but you don't need to plug and play the same exact numbers as me. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this image to drive the roughness and the bump of our coffee here, just to add a bit more realism. So how we're going to do that is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to add a color ram and plug our image into it which will give us a black and white image, which we can view by plugging in the color to kind of give us a preview. And then I'm gonna play with the white and black settings here. Now, everything that's white will be rough 100% and everything that's black will be no roughness at 100%. And then with that color ramp, I can plug that into the roughness. But I also want to add a bit of bump, so I'm gonna duplicate this color ramp and then I'm going to put that into the color and the reason I'm using a different color ramp is because I want the bump to have a more natural like fall off from the foam into the coffee. So I'm gonna just ease out that kind of color a bit. But once I have those two color ramps, I'm ready to go ahead and plug my color into the color, plug my roughness into the roughness ramp, and then I'll add a bump node and plug my color ramp into that and plug that into the bump. And with that, we'll kind of have a basic coffee shader setup using just one image. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra hue and saturation node and put that on the color. And I'm just gonna bump the hue and saturation up to about 1.2. And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want it to be a little bit larger than life. Since I'm doing a big chunky coffee cup, I want it to be a bit cartoony. So I thought it might look a little bit better if the coffee is a bit more kind of saturated and cartoony looking. Next up, I'm gonna tackle the facial animation. Now, I'm gonna fast forward through this process because it kind of took me a bit, and I have an entire tutorial covering how I do facial animations with these facial textures. I'll link to that in the description below. The facial textures are included for free. Also, for this one, I added a little bit of extra animation using After Effects. You could use Grease Pencil if you want, but if you wanna use the facial animation I used in the opening of this video, I'll include that for free in the description below. So just make sure to click that link and you can go ahead and download that if you wanna follow along with the exact facial animation I used. Anyways, I just moved everything over to After Effects. That's what I'm more comfortable with with this type of animation and then re-imported it back into Blender as a facial animation. You could do this in Grease Pencil, you could do this with maybe some of the transform nodes, but I just found it quicker to be this way. So I just messed around, kind of got something I wanted a bit smoother than my normal stop motion result, and here's kind of the final result I ended up with. Next up, I'm going to import the face texture into Blender, and I plugged mine into a mix RGB node, and then put that into my color on my principal node, and then I just turned the roughness down a bit to kind of give my mug a ceramic look. So next up, I need to UV unwrap this mug, and what I'm gonna do is grab these bottom and top edge loops here, and I'm just going to mark those seams, and then I'm going to select everything and press U to unwrap. And then after that, what I'm gonna do is grab these few little islands over here and I'm gonna scale them down. And then I'm gonna take this big island here, which kind of represents that middle piece of the coffee mug where I want the face to appear. And then I'm just gonna scale and move that around until I get the face somewhere that I want placed perfectly. You'll wanna make sure that you have the extend mode set to clip, that way that you don't draw your face all over your mug a bunch of times. Now, if you imported my face texture, you should be able to see it playing back here real time in the viewport in the material. 
If not, take a look at the image sequence and see if you have cyclic or auto refresh turned on. Sometimes that helps it play back in the viewport as well. You're probably wondering how I animated this kind of like coffee up here. So I'll get to that in a second. But first, let's look at what I did with the mug. So you can see here that I had the face kind of playing back and forth and I wanted to add a little bit of turn. So I just took the mug and you can see here that I just added a couple keyframes just to turn that mug a tiny bit. I just turned on auto keyframe. I didn't do anything fancy and I just kind of had the mug turn to kind of match the face a little bit to give it a little bit of extra motion. Now what I did a bit more uniquely is this coffee up here. So this is actually a really simple animation. So if you recall, we had the kind of just circle that we used so what I did is I actually just added a rotation keyframe. There's no kind of fancy, there's no fancy liquid simulation or anything like that. You can see here that I just have a couple rotation keyframes kind of going back and forth. So I just grabbed it and just kind of moved it towards the camera back and forth like this with auto keyframe on. So that's all that I did there. Now to add a little bit of extra kind of texture to the animation, what I did, and I have a t this covered in a tutorial for claymation, but I added a subdivision modifier and then I added a displacement modifier, and then I put, set that to a really low number there. And for my texture, I used clouds, and then I inserted a keyframe on size. So then what that allowed me to do is to come over here and grab the noise size here, and then I came over here to the modifiers, and I added a noise modifier, and I set my scale to 10 and my strength to two. And you can see, I'm gonna switch to solid view so we can play it in real time. You can see how we're getting just a little bit of kind of wiggle on that water. So that as he's moving around, it looks like the coffee is moving as well. So that's all I did for animation. So it's pretty simple setup there. I didn't do anything fancy here with the lighting, but I did spend a lot of time experimenting. So I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this point, but the general gist of the lighting setup is that I put an HDRI into the scene and then used a couple plain lights just to add some bright light on either side of the mug. And then what I did is I went through and I added a couple point lights right behind the edge of the mug on the opposite side of the camera. And the reason I did that is so I could get this kind of little rim light effect that you see in the final render. If you're interested in learning more about lighting, I do have a full tutorial covering the basics of lighting and kind of how I approach lighting a scene. So if you're looking for a deeper dive into how I would light a scene like this, I recommend checking out that tutorial. Lastly, I just want to say thank you for watching. As usual, tag me in what you create at Southern Shadi on Instagram, where you can also follow me to keep up to date with kind of art and products and all that I'm planning to post as well. Let me know what you think about this format of video. This was a little more, I guess, intermediate, so it didn't take me quite as long to record or plan. So if you're interested in seeing more tutorials like this, I might be able to produce more content. Let me know in the comments below. Have a great day.